appear to have a uh, continuous motion using uh, you know, consistent plane here. Your goal is not to rotate your body a lot, but uh, this should be a kettlebell motion centric. So guide the kettlebell nicely here. And then final wind up and then let it go. So you repeat this several times and then final wind up and let it go. Yeah, the last one, it doesn't have to go that, that high. When it goes too high, it will drop like this. So we'll try to, instead, try to more, more ex more extend out. out more, yeah. And then currently, considering the weight of the kettlebell, the tempo is too fast. Too fast? Yeah. Okay. So slow down a little bit, and then you don't have to really fight it. Yeah. So feel the inertia, feel the, weight of the kettlebell. Swing, swing, swing. Keep, keep the pelvis, uh, move the pelvis laterally more instead of just uh, spinning around more. Okay. So don't be afraid of uh, moving your pelvis away, forward, away, forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then let it go. So this way you will use you will engage your lower body more and more. And then okay, let's put it there. Fifteen years of <laughs> interesting. You can see like once you started getting tired, that's when it started looking good. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. When I'm just yeah. When, when when you were when you had strength, you were just arming it, and when you were tired, you were leading it with when body. When you cannot fight anymore, then suddenly you, your body assumes better mechanics. So slightly, throw the rope slightly this way first and then bring it back. And keep swinging back and forth, keep swinging back and forth. Mm -hmm. Now the back swing doesn't have to be that fast. Okay. Do not snap it. Okay. okay. Yeah, that is good. That, that, uh, that speed is good, yes. Uh-huh. Yes. I can feel much better doing this. Yes. Now the timing is really good. Yep. The yeah. timing is really good. Yeah. So don't you know? Don't try to move jerky. I feel I feel this better when I'm swinging this than I do when I'm standing. Yeah. And then when you do it right, then uh, you will feel tension in the, in the muscles in the hip. Right here. Yeah. The timing is perfect. Now, pay attention to the motion of the rope. Is it moving along a consistent plane or whether the plane changes in the back swing and the down swing? So pay attention to that. You have to guide the rope along a consistent plane uh -huh. in both ways. Instead of going inward here and then inward here. So pay attention to the plane, the rope is moving, keep it Consistent, back and forth. Yes. Oh, better. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Now it's more consistent, back and forth, right? Not right. going inside. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Before that, you, tend, you had the tendency of uh, turning too much. Right. It was going inward. Yeah. More, almost feeling like a wider, yeah. wider back yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Instead of spinning. Yeah, you let it go more wider, right? That's it, that's it. So again, try to keep the plane consistent. Your timing is already perfect, so, uh, uh-huh. Yes. Yes. So that way, that way, you have to be able to control how much you have to turn mm -hmm. or how much you have to reach out. Yes. I feel like as soon as this is getting and wrapping under my shoulders, I'm, I'm, I'm getting yeah. and then yeah. going. Yeah. yeah. But if you rush, then what happens is that before it completely wraps around your body, you try to pull it down. Mm -hmm. But now your timing is really good. So you're not rushing much. So perfect. So uh, 
the you are we are responding to the rope swing very really well. Yeah. And now you you feel the consistent string play with the rope, right? Mm -hmm. Then keep that in mind and then let's go back to the club swing. Again uh, you know take a small steps back and forth and keep swing. And then make sure again guide the club along sort of a consistent uh, swing play. Yeah, feel the motion of the club head. Feel the motion of the club head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it, a lot of it is coming from now low body, mm -hmm. not as much yeah. from the upper body. If I Feels more more like a motion instead of up. Three, almost a three-part swing. Just a, just a free your low body. That's all you need. You don't have any problem in terms of uh, ball striker. So it's all about how you uh, you know right. just uh, allow your body to move all together as a as a generally orchestrated motion. But what do you mean a three-part swing? When well, you my, said that. I mean my initial swing is wind up. You get up here at the top. There's a slight pause. Then I start down, and then I feel like I'm just rotating. It's almost like we saw it on the on the analysis. It's it's, it's basically in two or three different parts. Mm -hmm. Instead of being, we watch Grant Wade. It's more fluid. As this is going back, he's he's increasing that movement arm because he's already moving. As he's going back, he's he's already getting the pressure this way. So now it feels all like, more like all one thing rather than three separate it's things. Continuous. It yeah. feels like it's just continuous motion versus and then, and then also yeah. when you start the downswing. Try to keep your back toward the target to, to delay the opening of the chest. Right. And then when you start from this position, naturally your arm will go down this way and then coming down and then turn around. So you don't have to put a lot of effort in terms of squaring the face. Simply let it come down instead of introducing the early shoulder turn, coming down and then let it go. So and I think what we were talking earlier about, and you're asking about <clears throat> the direction of the arms and the yeah. club slotting. I mean, I think me correct me if I'm wrong, but anatomically, if if I start down with my legs, my shoulders still shut. My arms, they're not going to go out here. If I'm if my old my shoulders are this way, the arms are going to go this way. It's just the way we're built. I mean, if you're, uh, I think what happens is we're all you know we're all trying to get speed and we're going faster and we're trying to get speed with our arms. And so what I was doing was this. So I got the legs and the shoulders going, and that's throwing the club out here. And I'm trying to get all the speed with, with, with my arms and with my torso. And what he's saying is when you're when you're focusing on the ground force and keeping the back to the target, this is gonna this has to come down here. It has to. So you don't have the intention to shadow the club. No. Naturally, no yeah. There's a separation between the lower and the upper. So if I'm here and if I'm focusing on the lower, my upper is just kind of passive. My back stays a target. This is going to sling. Just it's going to slingshot this thing right through there, without having to really think about that. My so, opinion, I think. So that's why uh, you know the expression of keeping your back toward the target when you start the downswing. That's important. Right. Some people open up early because they're afraid of losing the ball from sight. Right. Mm -hmm. So they have to watch, and even when they hit, they have to watch the ball and then try to hit. That's why they open early. Right. Right. But the, because of that, you know, they lose a, a lot of speed. But if you just let it go down here and then swing through by using the low body. Say, say, do that again and stay there for a second. Take up the top of the mat swing. So from here. So from here, when he moves his legs, his arms aren't going to naturally want to go out if his back because, is facing the target. Yeah. It's going to want to just down, down here. It's going down here. And, then, like, and I think that's where, I think that was maybe. So this is a Answer common common uh, issue that I see a lot in many golfers. No matter how you reach this position, always they always start opening the you know chest early. So then the hand has to come inward like this. Mm -hmm. But from here, just to let the arms go down this way. Naturally, you will be able to keep the shoulders closed longer. You don't early open it. So let it go down this way. What do you mean? Na what do you mean? Naturally, it'll do it. No, no. Not if it's if it's body led. If then if you just drop it this way, 
Mm -hmm. If you move your arms and curl up this way, naturally your, your shoulders will stay closed. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then as you come down here, continue this motion, you don't really introduce any um, excessive motion of the body. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. Because it's coming down this way, all you worry about is uh, working with the ground. Coming down here, and then just open up like this. Naturally, you have a good shift on the left side. The left leg will be able to push well. You have enough uh, shift of the center pressure mm -hmm. this way. Coming down here, and then yeah. just turn around. And also, you will be able to push the ground with the left leg. So you don't have to intentionally do all these things. Right, but on the backswing, your right elbow is not bent as much. And then on the downswing, it's bent more. So because it's bent more, it's up on a higher plane. So you do have to have some kind of different mechanic on the downswing to keep you from being over. Imagine. No. This, this, think this is more club motion, club head motion oriented perspective. Yeah, yeah club head. So when you go this position here, mm -hmm. okay, if you try to open the chest early, yeah, that's then now this is in trouble. away from the original motion plane. But you just go up here and then try to bring it down along this plane here. So, that, so you don't have to, uh, you know. Uh, so there is a, there's a little consciousness between ground first and also like club head plane coming from the so inside the, a little bit. The purpose bit. of uh, this uh, the swing back and forth with the kettlebell or and the, the rope, rope mm -hmm. or even with the club, you can, you can do this motion here. This is to feel the swing plane here, and on the way down, just bring the club along that swing plane. See, for me, every time you say like it naturally happens, I'm seeing a widening in the right elbow. And I, for me, that seems like the missing piece. That most people, when they make a backswing, they go like this and they narrow it as the shoulders open. And the good no, players, the reason, I the see a widening. Why you narrow it is because, again, yeah. as I mentioned earlier, you have the shorter turn going this way. Mm. And the arm is moving down this yeah, way, yeah. you have to narrow it down. Yeah, because you just swing over the top but of the wall. You have two yeah. different motions, two uh, incom incomparable motions mixed together. So in order to adjust to this, you have to, while the shoulder is opening, you have to bring it down. That's why this happens. But if you guide the club along the swing plane you establish with this uh, continuous swing motion, mm. you don't have to do anything intentionally, just to bring it down there. This is the plane your club has, has should move. Go up here. Yeah. Just to follow that plane. Mm -hmm. There, you have a good uh, orchestrated motion of the shoulder turn and that arm motion here. So you don't have to intentionally narrow this mm -hmm. or intentionally open it up. Let's see, Bill. Yeah, just to pay attention to the club head motion. Your goal is to guide the club. Normally, when you yeah. start from when you think of hand path, you think people get in trouble sometimes with hand path because they they go they get themselves stuck on purpose thinking about the hand path in and out. Well, the hand path again, it all depends on how you start the downstream with your shoulder motion. But if you don't open the shoulder motion uh, shoulders that that early, then you don't have all those problems. This is just the natural movement. But because you open the chest early, that's why you, you are introducing a motion which basically uh, causes a, you know, a deviation from the intended motion. Then you have to have a compensation. And if somebody's you opening the chest forward. early, what's usually the thing? Then you have to move the arm. To no, I mean, like, what's usually the thing to help them get away from being that first? So that's why I'm saying you have a club the, head motion. The recentering. Club head motion centric. Okay, yeah, yeah. Continuous club head back and through. Club head motion. Yeah. When you start from here, then back swing pad and the down swing pad will be different. But when you have a continuous motion back and forth, then you already established the, the swing plane. So all you need to do is on the way down, just to guide the club head along the swing plane. Bill, see if you can do a continuous like you were doing yeah, with the do rope, only with the, with the club head though. Because you got into like a real good pattern with the rope. I want to see if it matches back and through. I want to see that. So when you move that way, you don't have to open the chest early. Yeah. So I can feel the difference with the yeah. legs. Definitely. 
Yeah, because you have the uh, the goal of uh, moving the club head you know, along the plane you want, and then your body will work together to generate that club head motion. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to introduce this motion and this motion. Right. You know, yeah. these are all actually incomparable. So they are just uh, uh, used as a compensation motion. When you have a motion a deviation this way, then you have to have a compensation in the opposite direction, right? right. But if you just guide the club, club head along the swing plane, and then you don't need to worry about how you, you move your body. Just use the ground on your legs and the guide the club head along the intended plane. So Dr. Kwan, you're saying when people can see their own swing plane, they make good, they make good changes because yes. sometimes they don't realize how so off for, plane for they are. The purpose of the, the rope swing right. and even the uh, kettlebell swing back and forth continuously is to sort of visualize the, the plane of motion. And then your goal is always a uh, clever centric or the rope centric or the kettlebell centric. Right. And if you can generate continuous motion along a consistent plane here, mm -hmm. and even the, the last swing, then you, you cut down, you get, get all, the noise. all the unnecessary movements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now your body works together, okay? In an orchestrated way, that you will just guarantee that motion. That's why the best way I can describe before and after what I'm feeling now is continuous motion to me rings a bell because I'm, I'm, I'm just going this way, everything's going this way, there's a pause and then everything's gonna start going this way. There's nothing continuous about it at all. No, yeah. So what I'm trying to feel like is I'm, is I'm so I'm still going back this way, and then this is starting, I'm starting to unweight and go this way as this is going back yeah. fashion. Yeah, so the advantage of establishing this uh, swing plane up front is because then you don't have to worry about uh, generating that motion. All you need to figure out is how to move your body to guarantee that motion, okay, to uh, secure that motion. Right. Let's see you drive that club head on plane with just your body belt, with just your steps. Steps. Yeah, even relax your arms even more. Yeah, that's a, he's a style, so. Uh, yeah. I just want to see if he can do it. That looks different already there. That looks different there. A little Yankee on the last one, but, but it look so yeah. Now, now have a bit more time up there. So going back. Patience. So your body still moves. Your body keeps moving, but uh, do not come down right away, but have a oh, more time. Yeah. In order to have more time, you have to actually push the ground well with your right leg. Yes. Mm. So that way, when, uh, when you have more time up there, then you have a mature backswing. Uh -huh. Good uh, transition. Yes. And then, downswing, let it go. Kill it. 